Hello, and welcome to this Analyst Angle. I'm Bob La Liberté, Principal Analyst with The Cube Research. Today, I'm joined by Wes Cummings, Chairman, CEO, and Co-Founder of Applied Digital, which designs, builds, and operates next-gen data centers to handle high-performance computing requirements. We're going to discuss the how the demands of Gen AI are impacting the how and where these next-gen data centers are being built. So welcome, Wes. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's get started. I mean, certainly you can't turn on any news cycle and not be hit with Gen AI news, right? It's really been dominating all the, the technology vendor shows this spring and certainly everything in the news cycle you hear about it. And the demand for GPU seemingly is just never ending. But the one thing we've noticed is that the power requirements for doing this AI training and inference is also very, very high. And that could potentially impact the ability for organizations, and by organizations, I mean both enterprises and hyperscalers, to deploy these AI workloads into existing data centers. So Wes, I'm wondering, you know, given your background, is this consistent with what you're seeing as well? Absolutely, Bob. What we're seeing is the power consumption, which whenever you're doing compute, so you know traditional data centers are more communications focused, they're more focused on streaming apps and doing real-time work environments and less compute intensive, but Gen AI is extremely compute intensive and compute generally equals power. I've given this stack quite a few times. So traditional data center, hyperscale data center, generally for a rack or a cabinet, you're using about seven and a half kilowatts per cabinet of compute. Uh, a single NVIDIA H100 server takes a little over 10 kilowatts by itself and you need these close together. So rack densities, you know, the amount of power that's in the, the compute rack needs to, that's available needs to go from, you know, seven or 10 kilowatts uh, for the rack up to, we started at 50, our, our next gen is moving towards 120 to 150. Uh, so you just need a lot higher power density and with that comes cooling. And so really the, the whole point of this is you need a different style of infrastructure to run these workloads versus, versus what has been built for the last you know 20 or 30 years. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, the fact that you've been building out these high performance data centers for some time now gives you a lot of experience and understanding how they need to be built, what needs to be considered when they're building them. I'm wondering if you could just touch upon What's the criteria that you use when you're thinking about how do I build out a data center to host AI workloads? So number one criteria is access to large amounts of power. So when we're doing what we're building, AI factory, you know, Jensen, the CEO and founder of NVIDIA talks about AI factories. And so AI factory is how many uh, GPUs can you deploy, deploy close together? And the, the importance of this, Bob, is that it's not just can we deploy GPUs, but the density of the GPUs needs to be high because this is parallel compute. These are all working as a sing single supercomputer. And so they're all interconnected with a technology that's also NVIDIA is called InfiniBand. So it's an optical networking technology, but all of the GPUs are networked together. You have distance limitations around that technology. And so you get a much more powerful compute cluster if you you know can put a lot more of the GPU servers close together and network them with this InfiniBand. And so the, the the overall power requirement is high and you want it all in the same location so we're looking at well north of 100 megawatts per location we're actually not doing anything that's under 200 megawatts so a significant amount of power we have a campus going up in ellendale north dakota that we've talked about being 400 megawatts of critical it load so that'll take over 500 megawatts to power that um but that's number one and then it's supply chain we typically like to be in northern regions uh which we, where we're focused now because this creates a lot of heat, and so we can lower or increase our efficiency and lower our PUE with with cold, colder climates and and the free kind of ambient cooling that's available to us in those climates. So those are the, the really the keys that we look for when we're, we're looking for a site to start to build this type of data center. All right, and and I just have to ask this because I'm the networking analyst here. What about connectivity considerations as well? I'm assuming that certainly if you're going to be doing any kind of any kind of AI training and any kind of inference workloads, that there's also going to be a lot of data that needs to be moved back and forth. So what does that do to your thinking about where you're going to place the data center? Yeah. So w these can actually be in, you know, non-traditional data center markets. That's what we're building in North Dakota, but you still need a certain amount of fiber bandwidth and latency. Uh, it's a lot less latency sensitive, but there is some latency sensitivity around this. So when we find locations, it needs to have 
at, at a minimum two diverse fiber routes that are that are ultra high bandwidth. Uh, better to have three or more. Uh, and then when you really think about these data centers, just to to kind of reiterate on this point, latency inside the data center is now extremely important where it used to be latency outside the data center. So latency inside, which is this InfiniBand interconnect that makes you know, the, the supercomputing possible. I don't think it's appreciated enough kind of what NVIDIA has done on the networking side to really enhance the the compute here versus just everyone's focused on the GPUs. But the the really the key here is, is that latency sensitivity has moved much more inside the data center rather than outside. But you're you're correct in that you need really big pipes that still feed into these data centers, big data pipes, so you can move a lot of, of information in and out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would absolutely think that. And I agree with you 100%. These workloads that are being run, the latency is critical. So organizations need to do that. Obviously, right, NVIDIA has got an advantage with their integrated InfiniBand and what they've done with it. And InfiniBand has obviously been used for a lot of high performance compute in the past. From my perspective, we also see a lot of Ethernet trying to push into that and the, the Ultra Ethernet consortiums and things like that. So yep. organizations are looking to see if they can challenge that supremacy of, of InfiniBand in these spaces, but they're going to have to prove the performance is equal to the task to InfiniBand to accomplish that. And obviously, I, I, I assume as well, security is going to be a big factor for you in these, these locations, both physical and also cyber. Absolutely. Huge consideration, physical and cyber security at the locations. Um, and you're, you're right on Ethernet. We see that as well. Uh, I think it has a little ways to go for, for what we've looked at on, on the Rocky side to catch up. Um, but, but, you know, Ethernet's been around for a long time and they've been able to, to kind of figure out everything in the past. And so I wouldn't put that, you know, discount that at all for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, and NVIDIA has their own Ethernet solutions as well that they can do. Uh, quick question for you around sustainability, right? This is something that comes up a lot. Organizations have talked about, you know, getting advanced CPUs and new chips that are going to be so much more power efficient and so forth. Obviously the GPUs start taking away from that, but I wonder if you could touch upon, you know, given all these increased power demands, what Applied Digital is doing to ensure higher levels of sustainability in either its existing or the new AI data centers that you're building out. Yeah, absolutely. So when, when we look at on our side, where we're developing our, our business and where we go, where the location is and what we can do from a sustainability perspective, there's two primary items. One, where is our source of power? So where's the power coming from? Is it a renewable source? So we focus on that. Uh, our, our locations currently are located with wind farms and so renewable energy. There's a, a roughly two gigawatts of wind power that feeds into the substation in Ellendale that that we're connected to. So that's one. And then two, the other thing that we can do is efficiency. So we're trying to drive our PUE uh, as low as possible. So for, for people that don't know, PUE is a standard in the data center industry that basically a PUE of one means that you're using 100% of the power for the IT workload. And typical PUEs can range anywhere from, you know, 1.35 to over 1.5, which means, you know, you're using uh, 100, so to power 100 megawatts at 1.5, you use at 150 megawatts with the remainder of those going into uh, cooling and mechanical. So we try to drive our efficiency extremely low. We have a facility in North Dakota that runs about 1.17 uh, on the PUE, which is extraordinarily good. So we're, it's about where we source our power and then also about driving efficiency as high as possible, our PUE as low as possible. And that just, well, that makes great business sense for us because if we're more efficient, uh, we obviously utilize a lot, lot less electricity. It's good for our customers because their costs are lower. So it's it both makes economic sense and, and also environmental sense. Yeah. And if I remember correctly from our last conversation, you're also doing some innovative stuff with the excess heat and using it to create greenhouses and deliver some some fresh vegetables back to the community. Good. So that's a, that's definitely a project for the future for us, but it's something that we're looking into because so historically we're doing air cooled facilities. So when we started with with blockchain facilities and then moving to our first HPC facility, we're doing air cooled. Much harder to capture that ambient heat, uh, but on our newest facility where we're running to a you know a liquid cool version, it's much easier to capture that ambient heat and use it for a purpose on site. Uh, greenhouse makes, I think the most sense for us in, in North Dakota, there's, there's companies that are looking into, like we talked about other applications like shrimp farming or other types of agricultural applications that this heat can be used for. But there is, we're, we're definitely looking into that as we go to a liquid cool, it becomes much easier for us to capture that heat and use it for a, a useful purpose on site. 
Yeah, that sounds great. It's, it's great to see those innovative ideas coming off as to how you can use that and, and drive sustainability. Another area I wanted to touch upon, you know, I always like to say that IT takes an e- ecosystem. And so I'm wondering, obviously you're building this out, you're doing a lot of the work, but you've mentioned NVIDIA and so forth. I'm sure there's a lot of partners that, that are coming together to ensure that your customers have the best possible experiences and, and high performance AI data centers. I wonder if you could touch upon that ecosystem that you rely on. Absolutely. So for us, there's, there's two sides to the ecosystem. There are, it's the data center itself building. And so we have our, you know, our supply chain and partners that we use on the data center build. And then actually we've leaned some on NVIDIA for our data center design. Uh, but on the actual GPU compute, we have relationships with NVIDIA where we're a elite tier partner, elite tier CSP with NVIDIA, um, and, and spend a lot of time with them, have great access to, to the NVIDIA hardware, Supermicro, which is a server provider that uh, provides the actual service to us with the NVIDIA uh, GPUs inside. They're, uh, I think the, the best in the business, one of the best in the business. And we've, we do a lot with super micro Dell is another one in the ecosystem that we've done a lot with. They've, they've started to come out with some really great solutions, uh, for the space, but we do rely on a lot of these, what I would call partners and, and our ecosystem for people that have, you know, decades worth of experience in this space and have been doing it, you know, longer than we have so that we can draw on that knowledge to really provide the best infrastructure solution that, that we can. Excellent. That sounds great. And I, obviously you're doing something right, because if I read the news correctly, the latest data center that you're building out, as you mentioned in, in Ellendale, North Dakota, uh, not yet operational, but already sold out. So you've got all this great expertise experience. You're using it to put together these data centers. What should organizations do if they want to get in on the next data center you're building? Sure. Just as a, as a point of clarification, we are under LOI and exclusivity and working to, to finalize the lease for that, but we're yeah. only working with one party to do, but that, that actually is for the full campus there, which I mentioned is, is 400 megawatts of critical IT load. So a, a really large campus, uh, by any measure. Uh, but we, we also have a, a large power pipeline that we will be moving to our next site uh, shortly. We're going to start marketing those sites. And I think we, uh, for our company, we have really good access to power. We were ahead of the game for from that perspective. We were locking a lot of this power up in, you know, in 22 and early part of 23 before the, the real boom started happening. And so we have that access to power. We, j- we know how to find power. We have supply chain on the data center side. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll, go out and start marketing those fairly shortly. Uh, and you know, anyone who is looking for space, we'd love to have a conversation. All right. Sounds like everyone needs to stay tuned, but the fact that you've got the power locked up, sounds like a pretty good advantage to have. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, listen, I apologize, but that's all the time we have for today. So Wes, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks Bob for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching this analyst angle on how the demands of Gen AI are impacting the how and where next-gen data centers are being built. For more information on Applied Digital and how they can help you with your AI data center requirements, please visit their website.